This is that um, high density polyethylene top that I like to have. Um, very easy to clean it. Um, you know, usually just some, uh, well, sometimes alcohol, I guess. Sometimes I'll just, if it gets really crusty, I can use a scraper to get stuff off. I originally got it because I work in, in caustic a lot and um, the wax just comes right off, so that was great, but I think it really saves my tabletops. All right, so I've got this quick dry white. Okay, so here's my one to three G gel to cold wax mediums. So here's my white again. And then here's my little palette here. What I want to show you is, this is a full sheet of Arches oil paper. And I hope the whole thing fits underneath this, um, yeah. It's okay, I have to move stuff over though. <laughs> make it fit. So I'm just going to work on like three, six, nine, twelve at a time. You know, one thing that I like to do is um, just make sure I got the tape kind of burnished down so that um, just make sure that, of course these gloves are clean so I don't really need the newsprint, but um, just want to kind of really burnish it down and make sure that those edges are really taped down so that it, it'll help prevent the oil paint from slipping underneath there. And if that happens, it's okay. And it will, because it does. But um, you can help prevent that somewhat just by really pressing it down, burnishing it um, like that. So I've got a limited palette. I've got the red, the blue, the black, and the white. And let me start out with just some mark making. Here's my mark making tools. I'll just set them here first, and as usual, I like to just grab a couple different colors. This actually has some, it's a blue. This is a Stabilo. It's like a blue. It's 8041. It's an aquarellable. I have some red, and because I've got that in my palette, I'm fine with starting with that, but I, this is a limited palette, so I want to keep it that way. So anything I have that's those colors, I'm fine with. This is actually a white. This is a black. Let's see how juicy this thing is. Hang on probably kind of dried out. Let's see. Let's try that. Yeah, that's okay. All right. Yeah. So um, I just pretend that the borders are not there. And I like to vary the amount of pressure, the kind of line. You can kind of turn this thing around. Um, just have fun with it. So um, do some nice bigger shapes. And then, this is my, by the way, this is my solid marker. It's hard to read it now, but it's Sakura. Um, it's on my, my artandsuccess.com website. Under resources, it's one of my favorite things. And it comes in all different colors. Um, I also have like charcoal, graphite. So here's just my mark making. Um, very different mark when you do this, right? Because this is just, um, what is this? This is a Conti, Conti pencil, okay. Sure, it seems like there's like something on it because it's not moving around very well, but uh, just marks because that's what I like to do. Just a way to loosen up and get started and, you know, get your blood flowing. Um, here's the blue. You can make shapes across the border and not worry about it. Okay, here's my marabou crayon. Looks like I'm running kind of low. That's also a very nice juicy mark. All right, so now what I want to do, I'm going to move all these things out of the way. Everything takes up space. Um, I do have a bit of collage material here. I want to explain that this collage material, um, number one, it's just rice paper and I had a stencil on top and I took 
acrylic spray paint and I sprayed through the stencil and that's how I got these dots. But what I've recently discovered is that it works really well if you coat any kind of collage paper when you're working with cold wax medium and oils with clear gesso. And this happens to be the Liquitex clear gesso and I love this because I found that um, after experimenting with it that uh, it really does stick very well. And the reason that it sticks really well is because it is a gesso, it's a clear gesso, it's gritty, feels kind of like sandpaper and you know you can kind of just tear some pieces like this. You can apply the clear gesso to anything and I do recommend pretty thin collage paper if you're going to use it. But um, so I have you know various pieces that are like this and to adhere it all you need is some cold wax medium and it, this does have Galka gel in it so if I wanted to adhere some collage paper right now I could do that just randomly so I'm going to put some here and some smearing is going to happen from all those dry marks but um, some people ask me you know why do you why do you put cold wax medium on there? You don't actually have to but because I'm putting um, collage paper on that is the glue so I put it on, I put cold wax medium underneath the collage paper put the collage paper down, better make sure I've got enough of this medium underneath it because that is the glue. <laughs> so you put this down, you squish it in there and then you just basically encase it with cold wax medium and there's your collage piece in there. As your cold wax medium gets a little bit dirty from all the graphite or whatever it is that you're putting it over, you can save it and use it. You don't have to throw it away. Um, what you'll do then is mix it with the darker colors. Not that it would really, you could mix it with white and it wouldn't do very much, but um, it's just, a, it looks dirty, but it's actually not that bad. It's pretty see-through. Okay, so I'll put the lid back on this and what I'm gonna try is, um, there's another artist I've been watching his videos. His name is Dan Terrells, and I hope I'm saying his name correctly, but I will um, list his name so that you can kind of watch his videos. Um, this is just something that I was watching one of his videos, and I thought, oh, this would be really fun to try. So I'm gonna just take a color here. Um, I'm gonna take some of this ultramarine blue here, and I do want it to be kind of dark, so, oh, that's purple, huh. I know I had purple. Um, I'm gonna add some of this red to it. Okay, here's some ivory black. It's 1980 ivory black. Here's it's made by Gamblin. Sometimes I'll use student grade colors, and other times I'll use the professional grade. If they're highly potent colors, then um, it's, it can be an advantage to use the student grade because they're a little bit less intense, because they have less pigment. And this is black. Um, the student grade will have less power than if this were the artist grade, but I just want to add some black to this. So watching Dan's videos, um, sometimes he'll put you know bits of paper down and you know as kind of a mask and, and that, that kind of thing. But I'm going to keep this one pretty simple, and I'm just going to start out with this. So he makes like these windows. Um, he'll use cardboard and stuff like that, really thin cardboard. But I, um, this is again that uh, mighty board. So I'm going to move this for a second. and put this down. So then I take a brayer, that's what I've been watching him do. Actually sometimes he'll just take a palette knife and spread the paint that way, but I'm going to use a brayer here. I'm trying to get an even thickness, not too thick, just and then cover this plastic over. I just love monoprint. So when I saw this, I was like, wow, that's, that's really cool. The idea of doing it this way, this plastic, it's just pl very thin plastic and I've taped it to the back side of this mat. Um, you can see on the back side here. I've just taped it on um, 
And again, this is Mighty Board plastic. It's super flexible and reusable, and you know you can clean it off if you wanted to. But um, so there's paint on one side, not the other. And then I grab my 12 windows here, as you can see. Okay. So then you just take this guy and you put the paint side down. And I didn't really, this is not meant to correspond really with um, the size of these little squares per se. I'm just gonna kind of drop it into place like that. And then it's a matter of what do you wanna do? <laughs> this is where it gets you really fun. Now I've got some various tools. I learned about these in my, in my recent workshop in Texas and <laughs> So thank you, Shirley Bagosh, um, for your, these are like some weird thing, like they're a tire, they have to do with tires. Um, I'll put the link in um, my resources section because I can't remember what they're called, but they're meant for tires. They're like noise deadeners or something like that. So let me just show you the mark that that makes. It's pretty cool. See, it's like that. Um, so, you know, again, it's, this is all about mark making for me. I like to exploit mark making and some marks will be like this um, and there are three different widths I have so maybe I'll do that there uh, while I'm still on this side what else have I got I got these little embossing tools and they tend to have different ends like the ball tip is um, different sizes and like this is the bigger ball size so I might try that and just see what happens um, really this is just Arches oil paper but if I want to do something like text or asymmetric writing, and again, I can't see the border, so that's kind of fun too, because whatever's happening is happening without me really seeing it, and that's kind of a nice thing. I have no control. There's the square. So I can lift this up and see how things are going. I'm just gonna take this paper towel and um, squish it down. You have to, you know, press down pretty hard to get it to transfer, and this gives a very different kind of mark. So if I go like this, a lot of pressure there and lift it, I get a line. Do things like this, and then lift it. There's my line. That's kind of interesting. Here's a, um, it's actually like a sand timer. It's got, see what happens if I do this. And then check, see how those marks are coming out. That's kind of cool. All right, so I'm gonna ink this up again. I can use that same color, or I can go off a little bit more red. Maybe I'll do that, grab some of this, put it here. right side down, got to put the wet side down, put that over here. I'm liking that. And then I take this guy and just try some of this. I'm gonna stick it down over here and do kind of the same thing. So that was this tool, and let's see, what would be different? What can I try that's different? Um, I don't know, let's try to... That's a different mark. All right, so now I have some pretty wet paint and a very crazy beginning here, which is fine. I don't mind that. Um, but 
working wet into wet can be a little tricky. So what I want to do, I've got my black, I've got my white, and what I want to do then is put some white down here. So um, my colors were, you know, this red and the blue, and I guess purple. So purple being the combination of blue and red. You just keep playing with it until you like what you see. That's where the personal color comes in. Um, you know, so again, like I'm just starting to work in this one little quadrant and seeing what's possible. That's my little piece of collage paper right here. I'm going to start to tear some paper. So one thing I can do, because this is so wet, um, I'm going to get out my pigment sticks, my RNF pigment sticks. I'm going to stay with this palette. So I've got blue, quinacridone, magenta, or red would work, and then I've got a purple. But I think I'm going to stick with like the blue, the black, and maybe an off-white. Okay, so these are my pigment sticks right here. I have quite a few of them, and they're all different sizes, And but I'm staying with the palette, so purples, blues. I've got a couple whites and a gray. I'm not going to go into these like immediately, but um, I'm going to. I'm just keeping them in mind here that I might need to use those. I'm going to set those aside. Now.